Today we're exploring Nashville Zoo, a zoo with lots to offer from crazy critters to animals from down under, and if you're lucky, maybe even a bear fight. There's a bird encounter and so, so much more. So stick around as we explore all this zoo has to offer. We were visiting the zoo in early May before schools let out, thinking the crowds won't be too bad. Well, we were wrong. There are a lot of schools visiting the park and a lot of preschoolers with mom. It was a very, very packed day, but we got some tips to avoid the crowd if you'll stick around with us towards the end. And we had an exciting announcement at the end of today's video. If you're visiting Nashville Zoo with a family of four, I would expect to spend about $150. $100 gets you in, $50 covers snacks and souvenirs for the kids. But Nashville Zoo does allow you to bring your own food in, so you can save some money if you're on a budget. The Unseen New World is Nashville Zoo's reptile and amphibian exhibit. It features North and South American lizards and amphibians and turtles and a few fish. Generally, these are not my favorite things at a zoo. They're always indoors, they're always loud, they're always crowded, they're always dark, and honestly, I don't enjoy looking at snakes all day. But the aquarium portions of this made it a really good exhibit, and there's a little bonus once you get into it. Also, I did think that it is a good idea, especially in our suburban world that we live in. It's a good way to show kids what poisonous snakes actually look like because many have never seen them. So take a minute, point it out, show your kids what's dangerous, what's not. And if you're like me, take some time to enjoy the aquarium. And the aviary section of this part of the park was a nice surprise. Didn't know it was inside this building because this building was closed last time we visited. But this area is really neat. I really couldn't capture how cool it was on camera. There's a sloth that was not filmable. There's so many birds flying around, I couldn't keep up with it. So take some time, enjoy it, look around. There's lizards, there's birds everywhere, but you really have to slow down and pay attention to see everything. We're starting out on the jungle loop, which is the walking path to view most of the animals in the zoo. All the animals' enclosures are their natural habitat, so it makes viewing the animals difficult, but it is beautiful, much like that animal kingdom feel if you've ever been there. The kangaroo area of the zoo is truly unique. It's actually a petting zoo. You can pet the backs of the kangaroos as you walk through and look at them. You get a really up-close view of them, and it's just really neat. I think it's one of the only zoos in America that you can do this, so don't miss out. So for a little bit, I'm just gonna let you see all the animals that we got to see. Again, this is just a small sample of the animals that were out available for viewing. And as always, monkeys never disappoint. If you can't tell, we kind of like flamingos. We stayed here a while, and what's not to like? Critter Encounters is the petting zoo area. The zoo has everything you would expect. Goats, farm animals, the unexpected, large turtles, and toucans. The zoo does feature two large savanna type areas with ostriches, zebras, antelopes, and rhinos. As you can see from our rhinos here, it is the middle of the day and most of them were trying to find some shade. 
Also do note, while we were visiting in May of 2024, the giraffe enclosure was closed due to construction. There's actually a lot of construction going on at the zoo and improving the parking deck and a few other areas. Good to see progress, but it was a little disappointing not to see the giraffe. And here's our crowd saving tip. Don't forget to go to Grassmere Historic Farm. We visited the zoo before and actually didn't even notice that this was here, but luckily we found it on this trip. It's nice, quiet, peaceful, and there's animals to look at. But there's also lots of beauty, gardens, historic things to look at. The main house was under construction or remodeling while we were there, so we were just able to see the outside, but it was a nice, great area of the park with very few people on it on a very busy day so when you're there don't forget to check it out Another crowd avoiding tip is to head to the right when you enter the park instead of going on the left where most of the animals are. Head to the right. There's two bird exhibits there that are beautiful, out of the way, peaceful, and you get really close to some beautiful birds. And as always, we're going to eat when we go anywhere. We visited Steam Boys. This is for the second time we visited the Cleveland location earlier in the year. Really liked it. If you like dumplings, if you like spicy dumplings, if you like really good food and a nice clean atmosphere, this is your place. Uh, this particular location, it was off hours. Could have had a little better service, but excited for it to come to North Alabama and Huntsville very soon. Are you ready to see these faces on your kids again? Why don't you consider a trip back to Walt Disney World? Or maybe it's your first time, whether it's characters, the beauty, or the snacks.
wait a minute, mom and dad are freaking out. The price, the cost, the plans, the craziness. Don't worry, we've got you. Yes, you. Find us at Disney Magical Travel on Facebook to book your next trip. It costs you absolutely nothing. We save you money, we save you time, and we'll give you our best recommendations for the entire trip. Check us out today.